So Larry Hoppin here from Orleans on the phone with me, and uh, you guys are uh, keeping busy still these days. Well, it's been 38 years since we started, and uh, yeah, who knew? You know, it's amazing. And yes, we're uh, we're gigging uh, in Maine and Connecticut uh, coming up, and then <clears throat> the bigger band that we have, which we're a part of, uh, called Rock and Pop Masters, is going to Mexico. So we're we're keeping busy, yeah. Now, what do you think of rock, rock and pop masters? I mean, you guys, that's like an international uh, music ensemble right now. Well, it you know, it's been a labor of love for almost 15 years. And we've really kind of gotten a handle on it in the last five or six years. And uh, we just went over to Iraq and played five shows for the troops there. And uh, like I said, we're going to Mexico in a couple of weeks. And, uh, yeah, we've, been, we've played in Asia. We've played... Uh, South America, and uh, and in Canada as well. So, uh, yeah, we we get to travel and play music, which isn't a bad deal. Now, Larry, tra all these years, you still enjoy traveling as much as you did, let's say, back 38 years ago. Well, you know what? I I enjoy traveling because I I love seeing new places, and um, I don't enjoy getting there so much, you know, or coming home so much because. The methods of travel are just, you know, the flying thing is really a drag now. But uh, but being in Iraq or being um, in Asia or wherever, you know, sometimes you, uh, it's always fun if you're playing music. And sometimes, you know, we just go to these great places. Like uh, I was in Paris a few years ago with Robbie Dupree, who's a very good old, close old friend of mine. And I'd never been to Paris before. And uh, I loved Paris, and I would love to go back. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it's an awesome thing to be able to travel and have a big bonus to actually get paid for it and, and to be able to do what you love to do, which is perform for, for, for people while you're there, you know. And Rock and Pop Masters, for the people that don't know, you know, includes lots of musicians, you know, from uh, famous household names. Yeah, the, the website is, is the words rock and pop masters.com uh, the list of people that plays with us <clears throat> is uh, about right now it's about 30 different artists they include people like Edgar Winter and Mark Farner from Grand Funk Railroad and Jimmy Day Jameson from Survivor <clears throat> and um, Felix Cavalier from the Rascals who is one of my heroes when I was a teenager and, uh, you know, so I get to play with uh, people whose music, we're all fans of each other's music, and we have a great time. And uh, the shows are, there's no two shows that are ever quite alike, so it's it's really fun. So, Larry, where are you guys going to pick out the tunes and the selections you guys are going to do for, like, Rock and Pop Masters? Well, I'm the music director, so what happens is uh, whenever a new guy comes in, you know, a guy who's never played with us before, we just basically focus on... Um, I don't know, maybe three to five or six of the biggest hits they've had, like Alex Lidgerwood from Santana, who sang with Santana for 16 years. You know, he comes in and he does Black Magic Woman and Oye Como Va and Evil Ways. And, um, God, well, you know, I, I hold, hold On and I'm Winning, which he actually was the original singer on. And what happens with each of these guys the first time we meet is, when we discuss on the phone before we meet, you know, we send them P3s around. The band is very, very uh, professional, and uh, we've been working together for quite a while now. So the band just studies the, the MP3s. Everybody gets used to the, uh, the arrangements. Um, everybody focuses in on the vocal parts. We sort that all out when we get together uh, the day before or the day of the gig. And uh, and we just get up on stage and perform, and <laughs> it's you know it it the first time it's really good, but if we get to play together several times, it just gets better and better. So, uh, like by the time we were finished in Iraq, we were really we were really solid with that show, and that show was Joe Bouchard from Blue Oyster Cult, Skip Martin from Cool and the Gang, uh, Jimmy from Survivor. Uh, myself and God, who else was there? There was another guy with us. Oh, Alex uh, from Santana, and we had John Jorgensen 
And if you don't know who John is, I mean, he's a world-famous guitar player who was with the Desert Rose Band. He was in Elton John's band, uh, along with our drummer, Charlie Morgan, who actually was with Elton for 13 years. So um, the band's really good, and it's a lot of fun. Now, do you guys bring video cameras and film all these shows, or is it just, you know, let's just film one show? No souvenir fu filming, let's say. <laughs> well, we, we do film as much as possible. And um, we do have on Facebook, if you go to Rock and Pop Masters on Facebook, you can see we're just starting to roll out some of the video from Iraq now. So there's some stuff up on there. And we're talking about putting a product out pretty soon that's a combination of uh, live audio tracks that we recorded multi-track uh, at this annual show we do here in Florida. That show that we have multi-track featured Joel and Turner from Deep Purple and Rainbow, uh, Robbie Dupree, John Cafferty, um, and a couple of other guys. So it's a, it's a big variety, and we do like to film because it's easy to film now. We just bring some flip video cameras. They capture the audio really well as well as the video. And um, you've just got to tweak them a little bit so that, they, that they're as, absolutely as good as they can be. And that's what we did in Iraq. I mean, you know, in Iraq, you want to go over there with not a lot of stuff because you don't want to carry a lot of stuff over there because when we were there, it was 130 degrees. And, um, you know, that's, that's really hot. <laughs> that is really so, hot. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, we, we carried some flip, flip video cameras. Uh, inexpensive, and they really did the job. And if you go on Facebook and look at look at uh, that Rock and Pop Masters page, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's really good. Everything has to be on film, it seems today. You know, with YouTube and all this stuff. Well, yeah. Well, you know, people people that are interested, they they want it. they don't want to just hear it. They want to see it. But the good news about us is, <clears throat> you know, we we look good and sound good. Um, I mean, for a bunch of guys that are probably 60 on my ne next birthday, so. I know a lot, I know a lot of guys who are my age that uh, you know <laughs> I don't I don't want to say the wrong thing but we we're, we're uh, you know we're in pretty good shape and we sound really good and um, you know it's it's kind of old fashioned really we we play and sing and we sound like the records and we have a ball doing it uh, I, I actually think that it's more exciting than the records because we. You know, we take the songs to a different place a lot of the time, but uh, it's it's very good, and we're really proud of it, and so we want people to see it. Do you find throughout all these years the music industry has changed big time, and, you know, is it going to go back to something in the near future? Well, you know, I, I think if you ask yourself, you know, it, has the world changed big time, the answer is yes. And I think uh, the music business is no exception and the music business that, that we know now is very, very different from the music business. Like, I was growing up, I was 12 or 13 when the Beatles came out. And, um, you know, that, uh, that was vinyl records. I mean, and ever since then, you know, we've gone through cassettes and CDs and 8-track tapes and all that stuff, and now we have the Internet and MP3s. So yeah, it's gotten it's gotten very very different. It's gotten very corporate, but the internet is a great play, uh, great leveling influence. And in terms of what I think might go back, I mean the technology is never going to go back, obviously. But what is good about the internet is that <clears throat> people have a really good shot if they if they have talent, something that people. Uh, will get interested in if if they're exposed to it, then if they can just figure out a way to to uh, get exposure on the internet, um, you know they can circumvent the whole corporate establishment, which is you know in my view a good thing. I mean I I, I wouldn't be doing any benefits for uh, for the labels that put our hits out, you know. Mm. Uh, so I'm glad to see an alternative. To having to sign up with a, you know, a Warner Brothers or a Columbia or whatever, because <clears throat> they're in business to make money for themselves, and um, you know, artists have a tough enough time making a living 
But now you can sell your own CDs and you can have people download your tracks. And, and as long as you're putting something out that people want, um, you have a shot at succeeding. And that's, that's really good. Very well said. Going to your guitars and amplifiers, what's uh, your collection looking like? <laughs> well, again, I'm pretty old-fashioned. I have a collection of, uh, I don't know, half a dozen amps, and they're all from either the 50s or the early 60s, with the exception of I have one 80s amp, which is a Laney from England that's a workhorse, but I have an old 56 Fender Tremolux. I have a 63 Bassman. Um, I have a couple of magnetones, which I love. And, you know, so it's a really old-school tube stuff. I mean, you know, I like certain digital modeling things. I think particularly Vox is good at that. And I play, when I, when I uh, have to travel to do a show, I usually ask for a Vox AC30 because they're, they're great-sounding amps and they're very versatile. But, uh, but my own personal connect- collection is just all really old um, tube amps. And, you know, uh, they're not investment quality because they're beat up because I believe in using them. You know, what? They, there's no good sitting in the garage. <laughs> That's true. I want to use them, you know. So I do. And the same thing goes for my guitars. I mean, I have a 10-year-old a Strat that I travel with. Um, but I also have a 57 Strat that, of course, I don't take out anymore. But uh, I, I like old I love old guitars. Like, I love old cars. Um, and uh, I don't have a I don't have a huge guitar collection or car collection at all. But uh, but I like the old stuff because you know just because something's newer doesn't make it better. So you got a '57 Strat. I mean that would cover all the guitars. You wouldn't need anything else. That's a r- incredible instrument you have there. <laughs> well, you know what? You know it is a really great guitar. It's a player's guitar. But what's amazing about my my 1999 Strat is that. <clears throat> it's actually much more powerful. The output of it is much more powerful. And I had an Alembic booster put in it that gives me a much wider uh, tonal palette. So it has the, uh, the classic Strat sound, but it also has uh, some other sounds that are, that are very, very useful. And um, I love that guitar, and the good news is that if, I, if somebody stole it or I lost it, the airlines ruined it or something, I could replace it really easily and you can't say that about a 57 <laughs> not at all how long have you uh, had that 57 strat in your collection since uh, 1981 wow yeah. very very nice guitar i'm sure oh yeah yeah they're nice for orleans you know um you guys are recording a new album anytime soon uh, recording writing new songs we are we're writing new songs we've been writing uh with some a-list writers in nashville and that's been very successful uh, we only had a couple of sessions uh, during one trip recently, but we came up with two. You know, we we wrote with two different guys, and we came up with two different really good songs, and we're we're finishing them up. Um, and there's some other stuff, and we're talking about uh, doing a fan-funded project, maybe in um, maybe right after the holidays. And uh, you know, we're we're happy that we can play "Still the One" and "Dance with Me" and all that, and uh, that allows us to. To attract audiences, but it's important to us to keep to keep putting out new stuff that we like, you know, stuff that we've written or stuff that we find uh, that other people have written, usually friends of ours. So yeah, so we're doing that. Same stuff for 38 years it gets a little boring, you know. Do you, do you do you still enjoy playing the old classics? Yeah, I do. I mean, the good news for us is "Dance with Me" and "Still the One" and all those things. They're good songs, so you don't get. You know, I don't get as sick as playing them. As you know, the song that kept "Still the One" out of number one, "Still the One" was number two uh, at its peak. But the song that came out, that was number one, that kept it out of that spot was "Disco Duck." Wow. And um, you know, imagine having to go around playing "Disco Duck" for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> couldn't be too fun. fun. No. <laughs> no, exactly. So you know, I'm just glad that we're. We're, we're able to. Play. I mean, they're good songs. People like them, you know. So, and they're fun to sing. They're they're increasingly difficult to sing, but they're, they're fun to sing. The way you guys are going to be recording your next album is it going to be like computerized Pro Tools, no old systems? Well, you know what? 
I made an album with Robbie Dupree a few years ago, and what we did was we recorded it onto a two-track, um, you know, an old Studer machine. And when we got all the tracks done, <clears throat> we transferred everything to Pro Tools so that we could still start off with that that uh, intangible warmth that you get from, from the old tape. Um so we, you know, we we're familiar and we work with digital recording all the time. But uh, you know, again, I like to use tube amps and we like to incorporate both schools. So we work at Charlie Morgan's, our drummer. He's got a nice little home studio. <clears throat> we record there a lot, and there are a couple of places around uh, where I live in Florida that we can record at <clears throat> that work well too. So it's a, it's hard to say, but th- those places are a good bet that would be working there. So you got some uh, gigs coming up soon there, Larry? Well, like I said, we're going to Maine and Connecticut uh, in about 10 days to play uh, a couple of trio gigs. And then Rock and Pop Masters is going down to uh, Mexico to play at uh, a beautiful resort. And then we're not sure. We may go back to Iraq uh, and do some more shows for the troops during the Christmas season. Uh, That remains to be seen, but that's exciting, and we'd like to do it. We're working on booking things going forward for both Orleans and Rock and Pop Mass. I'm working with Robbie Dupree, and we're doing some stuff uh, coming up um, in early October. And, uh, you know, I keep busy that way, too. Well, it's going to be good to see what you're you're going to come up with in the future. <laughs> Excellent talking to you, Larry. Same thing, Jason. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be talking to people in Nova Scotia. We've never played there. We'll certainly be... Uh, it would be a lot of fun to go to a new place and, and see our uh, Canadian neighbors. All right, Larry, you have an excellent evening and a great uh, tour up in the future. Thank you, Jason. You too.